In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, Jesus got into a boat, and his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was covered by the waves. But he was asleep. So they came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there came a great calm. And the man marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? My brethren, the words of the Holy Gospel that we, that we just heard tell us of what happened when the boat where Jesus was with his disciples was faced with a terrible storm. The waves were so big that it seemed that the boat would sink. So the disciples cry, cried out to the Lord, and the storm disappeared. This is what happened at that time, and this is what is happening today. If we move beyond the literal meaning of the scriptures, we will be able to see in the gospel for today not only a faithful narration of what happened in the past, but also a very accurate description of what is happening today. This gospel can teach us many precious lessons in these terrible times of scandals and confusion. That boat, where Jesus was with his disciples, is a figure of the church. The church which is navigating the sea of this world, navigating toward heaven. And the storms are all the trials that the church has to face here on earth. So the church is this spiritual boat that leads us to the port of salvation. The Catholic Church is the boat of Christ, the boat of Peter, the only one that can take us to heaven. And how comforting to know that we are inside this boat. However, we see in the gospel that this boat would not be spared of storms. The boat would shake. The boat would swing. The church would not be spared of the attacks of her enemies, who would try, without interruption, to sink the boat. We can see that from the very beginning of the church. Persecutions from the Jews. Persecutions from the pagans. And then all the heresies that the church had to fight over the centuries. So many trials. And sometimes these trials were so strong. Sometimes the waves were so big that it seemed that the boat was going to sink. 
But no, the boat didn't sink. It's still floating. All the tactics of the devil seem to have failed. However, the enemy of God is very clever. And he would not give up so easily. He tried to attack the church openly, and it didn't work. So he tried another way. And the new plan was to quietly infiltrate agents of evil in the church. Who would distill their poison? Who would corrupt the truth? But now, without being recognized. The plan was to send pirates to hijack the boat of the church. But pirates, who would pretend to be members of the crew of Christ, but who were instead members of the crew of Satan, Pirates from the red flag of communism. Pirates from the rainbow flag of immorality. Pirates from the white flag of ecumenism. This false peace that does not come from Christ because it compromises the truth. My brethren, it is with great sadness that we see that these pirates made their way into the boat. They made their way into the church. And we recognize these pirates not by the clothes they use, but by the words they say. We recognize the infiltrators by their teachings. If someone teaches the truth of Christ, he is from the crew of Christ. But if someone teaches something contrary to the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he is not from Christ, but he is a pirate. It is as simple as that. So we have to be aware. There are pirates in the boat. There are pirates in the church. And I would be guilty of a grave sin if I didn't alert you. And it is a sect of pirates is trying to take control over the church and has even climbed to positions of authority in order to give the church a new direction opposed to the words of our Lord. What they want is to create a paradigm shift, a new religion, free from doctrine, Free from morality. In a word, free from Christ. And they don't want Christ anymore because Christ bothers. The words of Christ do not allow them to do whatever they want. And so, of Christ, they keep the name only, but not the reality. And then they preach this empty Christ, this deformed Christ, claiming a new understanding of things. And I can give you some examples. Our Lord said that a man who divorces his wife and marries another one commits adultery. But now, 
They say it's okay. The Holy Scriptures condemn the unnatural vibes. But now, they say it's all right. The church always thought that there can be no salvation outside the true faith. And that's why so many missionaries gave their lives to evangelize the nations. But now they say that we don't need to convert anybody anymore. They are talking about ordaining women. Talking about dropping the sacred rule of priestly celibacy, etc., etc., etc. And I could go on for hours. But my brethren, we should know that the truth cannot change. Heavens and earth shall pass, but the words of the Lord shall remain forever. We cannot dare to try to update the word of God. But the pirates, they do try to change the words of God. They hate the doctrine of the church. They hate the morality of the church. And of course, they hate the sacred liturgy of the church. They are the anti-church, somehow mingled with the church of Christ. The weeds are mingled with the wheat. So in these very difficult times, we are called to prove the spirits, as St. John says, in order to see if they come from God. <clears throat> we have to compare the teachings we receive with what the church has always taught. That's why we must know our faith. That's why we must study the catechism. A good one. In order to discern what is true from what is false. And that's how we will be able to separate the weeds from the wheat. The heresies from the truth. And the pirates from the true ministers of Jesus Christ. Yes, my brethren, there are pirates in the boat of Peter. And they are working pretty hard in order to change the church. Which is just, which is just a nice euphemism for destroying the church. That's what they are up to. But now, under these circumstances, what should we do? Should we jump out of the boat? Should we leave the church? No, never. The boat is ours. They are the ones who have to go away. You know, my brethren, the situation nowadays is very delicate, very painful for each one of us. But we need to keep hope. The Lord said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. They will try, but they shall not prevail. And we must believe it. The church has seen other crises before, and she always came out of them is stronger. So let us not lose hope, but remember that our Lord is in the boat with us. 
The church is his boat. And he will help us to go through the storm. But as if you as if we see but as as we see in the gospel, if the Lord seems to be sleeping. It's time for us to wake him up with our prayers, with our supplications, ask his boundless mercy that the church may be delivered from her enemies, from without and from within, and may experience some peace. Domine, Salva nos perimos, Lord save us, lest we perish. So my dear brethren, keep the faith, follow the commandments, receive the sacraments. That's how we survive in these times. And hold on to tradition. God is on our side. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.